Welcome to the... Am I on? Yep. yep. Hello and welcome to the third and final of the Rising Stars webinars. Well done if you've kept with us for three weeks because there's been a few technical hitches along the way, haven't there? Um, thank you very much to Rising Stars for um, hosting these and thank you to the National Science Learning Centre where I am today. However, although I am at the National Science Learning Centre and I've got access to quite a, a lot of uh, good equipment, I've just used really cheap stuff that's won't cost you a lot and isn't hard to get hold of in school so you should be able to go into school and do some of this tomorrow should you wish to. Remember if you've got any questions while this is going on hashtag rising star CPD um, some teachers have asked if the PDFs of the um, PowerPoints will be available and they certainly will. Well, give me until next week and I'll get them all sorted um, and if you email rising stars that they'll sort those out for you. Don't forget you need to, if you want the certificate of completion, you need to have all three code words. And this is this week's code word. Um, the things will, the, the webinars will be going onto YouTube sometime next week, did you say, Alison? Yes. Yes, as usual, I've got a team in the room with me, so that uh, keep an eye on me in case things go wrong. Um, so I think that's all the housekeeping. Just an apology for me before I start. I had got quite a few little bits of, of equipment and that that I'd made for you. And I was staying in Leeds last night because I was teaching in Leeds this morning. And I left my suitcase in the back of a taxi. So every now and then I'll say this bit of equipment that I'd hope to have is in a taxi um, driving around Leeds with various things like my hairbrush. So sorry if I look a bit dishevelled this week. So, um, Manette. Thank you very much for your email. Minette um, contacted, contacted actors to say that the, the activity we did the first week with the, um, the liquids, checking for viscosity and how adhesive they were, one of her colleagues actually did that. And she said how lovely it was to just stand back and watch her year fives and listen to them. And that was such a lovely thing to hear. Um, and that really fits in well what we were talking about this week, which is... Has that worked? Have I got my next... Oh, I, just a very, very slight technical hitch. Can I, if I click it, will it go on? Yeah. Just waiting. You're on. Yeah, but I'm not sliding through. And I, oh, I'm, it's because I'm clicking the wrong one. My pictures aren't moving. <laughs> yes, my picture has moved. <laughs> so, Manette, uh, what you were telling me about your colleague fits in really well with what we're doing this week. We're thinking about process versus product, which I think is something we probably all know about, perhaps not in exactly those terms. And it's thinking about what, what, how we do things rather than what we do, and the how being so much more important than the what. And if you think about it, learning and science, both of those are a process, not a product. Can I just check, Helen? Am I on screen as well at the yes, moment? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Sorry, I, I can't see me. So uh, that, that's perfect then. Uh, and if you think, you know, according to Douglas Adams, the answer is not 47. And that's what it's like with learning and science, isn't it? There isn't an end. We're not at any point going to go, that's it. We've done that. We've finished, we've finished education. We've finished science. We're just going to... Um, it's, it's just a process and we're going to go, carry on, aren't we? And so often, I think, these days, we're under a lot of pressure to have a product. I know an awful lot of teachers are telling me, and I used to find it when I was in school really recently, they want lots of nice writing, they want neat writing, they want to writing of the highest standard, whatever you're doing. They want that product. Um, and as teachers, we, we want lovely practical ideas for science lessons that are really going to, that children are going to enjoy and be engaged and really take that science learning on. But so often I find, I go on a course, I get a really good idea, I take it back into school and that learning doesn't happen and the whole thing falls a little bit flat. And, and often I think it's because I'm thinking about the product, I'm thinking about that end product in, in the, instead of that process of learning. So we're going to be thinking about, um, that's going to be our theme today. Um, so, I'll move on to the next slide. Um, we've got these, which are a very, it, the other one is in a taxi, riding around um, Leeds as we speak. So this is a, um, a, a nice little toy, very nice little product, would go well with um, a series of literacy lessons, I think. I can imagine having... Um, perhaps children following instructions or writing instructions. I think this would be a really nice thing for some, perhaps some younger Key Stage 2 children to make a little kit and give it to some Key Stage 1 children so they could make their own toy with the written instructions. It's ever so easy. This is the bottom of an Easter egg, um, but a, a little Kinder egg, or I've cut ping pong balls in half. Oh, that's a little bit dicey. It's got some blue tack in the bottom just to weight it down. Then there's the... 
um, lollipop stick, little figure, and then it's just like a weevil because he really, really won't fall down. So there's some, all those lit literacy opportunities that I told you about, also that, that, that science that's in there, but it's so easy to just say, that's great, that was cross-curricular, we did some science, we did some literacy, move on, and actually the science learning hasn't happened. Um, and sometimes having a nice product gets in the way of the science learning. Now a nice thing to do is to uh, show children your prototype and then let them make their own. Almost, in almost inevitably, they're going to make too big a figure on the top. I know, that's right, the first time I made one. And if you have a big character, you'll just fall over. Also give children a, a choice of um, not just little short lollipop sticks, little bits of dowling, and some children might want to have a really, really tall one. Again, by the time you've got that weight in, it's just going to fall over. Don't give them a lot of blue tack. Um, and then they have those conversations. And one of those things about working scientifically is, is children using scientific language and expressing themselves. So something like that where it isn't perfect first time, where they've got to work through it's fairly obvious, it's not, it, it's, it's not um, going to take them a long time, but it's, it's going to really help them think and express what they know rather than just having a nice little product. So, um, moving on, this is... Am I moving on? Ah, yes, I've moved on. Uh, those two are in a taxi somewhere, but uh, this is uh, one that, an, an emergency one that's made out of the lid of a Petri dish. Um, and this is something similar bit of a weight. It actually works better with the uh, jar lids than... Um, so you can just see that. Ooh, don't fall down on me. And it just has a nice little wobble. So again, a lovely thing if you do the same sort of literacy things with this. Um, I would probably show that to children. In fact, I have done this with my year ones. I've showed it to the children. Uh, I don't show them the back of it and then they can make their own. And of course, um, this one just falls over um, without any blue tack, but most jar lids will, will sit there, but as soon as you start to rock them, over they go. So then they start to have that discussion and think, you know, what is it about mine that makes it rock? And think about that way. So it's a great way to get children thinking about and talking about gravity. Um, and you'll notice I've got the sort of a bit of a Christmas theme going on. This could be Christmas themed. You have a little snowman there instead of a face. Because I'm just thinking we're getting to that time of year when we get very product orientated, don't we? In our school, I know it was 30 Christmas cards, 30 calendars. And, um, and, and we were only half joking when we used to laugh and go, forget education, just make the Christmas cards. You, you know, we've all been there, haven't we? Um, so, moving on. Um, ah, yes. Slightly different tack now. This is just um, a, a simple little toy that, um, do, you, do you know these? I think they're called um, helicopters. And if you just, I'm a little bit worried I'm going to have um, a you've been framed moment. Are you just ducking, folks? So when you go like that, and we, yes, we just missed him, sadly. <laughs> so he's keeping hold of it now, so I can't do any more damage. But something like that in the playground, Looking at it, um, and you can see there's just a, a, a little a, um, a couple of pictures there on the screen. I've got some pictures of children playing with these. And to the outside eye, it would just look what's going on. It looks like nothing, doesn't it? However, I just spent a little bit of time uh, with my children a couple of years ago, listening to what they were saying. And for something like this, I find a dictaphone quite useful because there's so much going on, you can't um, keep hold of it, can you? Uh, and, and the assessment, just from spending five minutes listening to what the children were saying. I mean, this little girl, she was only five. She was in year one, but she was on an, an August birthday. She was, things like pointing to the arrows. Well, they've got these arrows. And when it spins around, it makes air so that they go up and then they land. Five-year-old. Um, I know why there's an arrow on here. That's the way you're supposed to twist it. Um, they fly because there's wind underneath. So it's not a perfect scientific understanding, but you can see loads of ideas. She's really, really thinking and talking. And in contrast, we've got this little boy who, as much as he did it, he was trying to throw it in the air. Now, obviously, the way to do it is that spin, um, and he really, want, really wanted it to go high, so he kept trying to throw it. He kept trying to reach as high as he could. Uh, he didn't say much at all, just the things like they spin fast. I think when it spins so fast, it goes up high in the sky. But most of his effort was put into just physically trying to move it up high. 
Um, and that told me so much about where his learning was, just 10 minutes from doing something like that. And if you think one of our um, objectives for um, working scientifically is to be curious and ask questions about what they notice and begin to use simple scientific language. And I could see exactly where these two children were, what they needed. He needed lots more physical experience, where she was ready to build on that language. Um, but even with older children, um, things like this, we've probably all done these in schools, um, made these little simple spinners. Let's hope it's going to work, fingers crossed. Um, let's try, I'm going to throw it, see if it spins that time as it comes down. Yes, it spun. So it's a lot to be going on there. You know, we're wanting the children to be raising their own questions. So just a simple thing like this, if you give children a chance to play with it first, just like I um, had my children playing with those spinners, um, just some time playing with these and then start to think, what do you want to know? What would you like to find out? A really useful um, uh, little trick is to, to actually give them questions written, question stems written down. So if you have what, why, how, when, what would happen if, how can, loads and loads of question stems and challenge children. Can you think of one question for each of those question stems? Uh, that really helps um, them to think of some, some different answers and think, can, can that be answered scientifically? And begin to think for themselves, how will I answer that? Remember, by the key stage two, they're supposed to be not only thinking of their own questions, but knowing what sort of scientific inquiry they might use to answer it. So um, that's the spinners. Oh, and of course, I have also got... Yeah, I did spin some um, sycamore. So it fits in with your um, yes. it fits in with um, living things and life processes and seed dispersal. So uh, lots of potential there. Now here I've got something completely different, um, and this is um, something I'd use in a maths lesson. Lots of maths potential, and it's just. Um, a box that had toiletries in and with a hole cut in the front. Now, oh, I need to change the slide. And you see the one I've got on the slide when it comes up? No? Why, what have I done? No. Oh, <laughs> I've, had, I've had my clicker confiscated because I'm obviously not using it very, very well at all. I should have a nice picture with some boxes on there. But, um, that's the one. So that there's some really nice posh boxes um, that uh, I had, had one year, and this is a bit more flimsy. Um, but it's a really great thing uh, to give the children that and a torch. Now with my year ones, I was just, uh, sorry to go on a bit off on maths a little bit, but it, you'll see why in a minute. I just, just do that, but perhaps have some compare bears in. How many can you see? You know, there's 10 in there. So if you can see three, how many can't you see? And there's the children like this counting how many they can see. And you can do it again and again and again. And it's so much nicer than the worksheet as a way of generating the, uh, similar sums over and over again. And then I used to put two Ps in so they could count in twos or five Ps and they counted in fives. If I was doing it with older children, you could like have 27 in there and just keep doing a subtraction from 27. Or you could have a handful of money in there, which I've actually got at the moment, uh, and work out, well, if you know you've got 97 pence in there and you can see 42 pence... Lots of maths going on there. How much can't you see? And again, you can generate that again and again. However, you could then go, oh, that's really great. That was, that was cross-curricular science um, and maths. But you wouldn't have drawn the science learning out of it. Um, but if you actually say to children, why, why can't you see? And you'll see the children putting their head really low down because automatically they do know, um, they have that instinct about that light travelling in straight lines and they need the light there to see. But however close they put their head, they can't see everything that's in the box. And so it's getting them to talk about, well, why can't you see everything that's in the box? What's happening? Um, how could you make it so you could, could uh, see everything in the box? Where could you put a hole so that you could see everything? And then the children can actually test out. So, you know, if you had a different shape of hole, so instead of that circular hole there, if I had a square hole here, would I be able to see more? Then you can actually test it out. But because it's a bit random, you're going to have to have those repeat measurements. And it's a great way for children to see that actually... Although this one might actually let you see more, it doesn't come out necessarily come out best every time. Um, and in a maths lesson, that could be a calculations, doing it again and again and again, and then you can do a bit of data handling at the end to see which is the best shape. So just, just a little something there. Moving on. 
Oh, that is my lovely knitted mouse, and I'm, you know where I'm going to tell you is. I'm very sad about that knitted mouse. He was in a lovely little um, gravity-powered sledge, but now he's driving around Leeds in a taxi. Hey. Um, but the way it works is, um, you've probably done, done something like this, it's just a weight. Um, and this actually, I got this um, ramp, it was actually from a charity shop, so this has hardly cost me anything at all. It's a, it's a case of keeping your eyes open. We're primary teachers, aren't we? That's what we do. So um, you have to just experiment a little bit with your weights. Now I've put some weight in this. Um, if I just take this so it's down to... Do know you can tweet in with any questions, don't you, on hashtag rising star CPD, and I'll do my best to answer them. Don't ask any difficult scientific um, runs because I might not be able to answer them. So there, that's not even pulling down at all. So we've got we've got the gravity, we've got some weight, but it's not pulling down, and it's a case of experimenting. Now, if you put too many on, it will actually go flying off. That the, the the weights will go shooting down, and that will go catapulting through the air, which. Um, I can imagine there's some children in your class would quite like. And you do just have to be a little bit careful because it can fuel that misconception that heavy things fall, heavy things fall faster than light things. However, if you get it just right, and as you can imagine before the webinar started, I was experimenting and playing with this. There we go. And I've even got like a little stop at the end. And that's a, a really, really good fun thing to do. And again, do you remember that we were talking about those question stems? Now, after a time of playing with it, give the children a chance um, to generate some questions, what would you like to find out? Because um, you can experiment with friction, with weight, air resistance, um, the inc incline. Now, I think a really nice thing to do would be to think how could you get your bobsleigh up to the top of the run, and think you'd have to get your weight just right because you want you want the bobsleigh to get up there really, really safely. You'd have to think about friction. Um, how much weight you need, you need it to stop when it gets to the top. But then, could you design so your bobsleigh was the one that got to the, to the ground fastest? So you could actually have teams of scientists uh, pitted against each other, designing the bobsleigh that would get up, to, get up safely the to the top and then zoom down fastest. And explain to them, that's what real scientists do. That's what, that's what scientists do. When you see the Winter Olympics, that's not just about athletics. There's real scientists and engineers who have designed those bobsleighs, have designed those safe ways of getting the bobsleighs to the top and have, have, have um, thought about the aerodynamics and air resistance and friction and all that um, fancy scientific stuff to, to get it to the bottom. You could actually have, you could have your classes um, operating against each other or, or teams within your class. I think that'd be jolly good fun and it'd meet loads of key stage two learning objectives. Um, and no doubt you could adjust it for key stage one as well. So, oh, yes, moving on. Oh, no, forces. Manette asked me to mention pulleys because she, um, I actually have met Manette. She's, she's been on a course at the National Science Learning Centre. She's been on several courses because she loves them so much. Uh, and I did a little session with her about pulleys. And this is a little something invented it. Most things in science education you've learned from somebody else but um, I did spend a long time on YouTube and videos finding out about pulleys um, and I don't, th I think, I think I invented this but this is just a little yogurt pot and it's got, um, that's a bit of a, a wooden skewer. And you know like those bobbins you get for a sewing machine so it's all quite small and it's nice because when you buy these little pulleys uh, sets ready made. It doesn't really tell you much about pulleys, does it? But this is so simple to make, and and I think the cheapest I found these is three for ninety nine p. Uh, little plastic ones which work just as well. So you can almost have enough for one between two, or maybe even one each. But to start off with, instead of using the pulley, wah, um, I've just got um, a bit of string on each side, and you can just feel the weight as you do this. I've put some weights in there so that I can feel the weight a bit better. And as I pick it up, I can really feel how heavy that is. I'm really aware of how, it's, it's not difficult, of course, I've got 20 grams in there, but I'm very aware of, of how far I'm lifting it and I can feel the force that I'm using. But then, just to compare, if I hook that through there, like this, 
right, now watch this. As I lift that, it is much, much easier. But looking how far I'm having to move my hand to move that yoga pot. I actually love doing this. I think I could. So you can see um, my hand is moving much, much further than the yoga pot. My, I think my hand's actually moving twice as far as the yoga pot. So although it's a lot easier, um, there's a cost in distance. And, and that is one of the things with simple machines. And you have to teach, is it year five that they learn about uh, uh, pulleys and levers and things like that? So these simple machines, they, uh, they do save effort, but they come at that cost of that extra distance. So that's a really, really nice thing. It's so cheap and easy to do. And if children make them themselves, they're much more likely to understand it than if you buy an expensive pulley kit. Another thing that's great to use on a larger scale, um, I've gone to boys, but any haberdashers I'm sure would do the same. You know, they get those big cardboard reels that have got ribbon on. They just give them to you. Well, if you've got some of those and some, some cardboard cartons, you can soon make, um, you know, let your children have, have a go at make, making pulleys. Um, and I was going to say, oh yes, this is called um, 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 a fixed, uh, a movable pulley. Because you can get a pulley that's fixed to the ceiling. And that is going to make it easier for you to lift something up because you're pulling down. But it's, it's not going to give you that um, saving of effort that this is called a, a movable pulley because it's fixed to the mode. So, there, I hope you find that useful. I've become a bit of a pulley anorak lately. Right, so now I'm going on to one of my um, very sad things. <laughs> my teddy bear is also in a taxi in Leeds. And I was going to leave the slide out because um, I can't show you. Some of you will have seen it anyway, but you'll, you, can, you can get a PDF of the slide so you can see what to do. You've got the weights and you just, as you pull like that, the, the gravity pull the weights down and, and the teddy slides up the string. But then as you let it down, the friction, just because you've got the angle of the straw, um, stops it going back down again. So then you, as you do that, the teddy climbs up the string. And it's really rather satisfying. I must warn you, it's a fiddle. You've got to get the angle of those straws just right. But the reason I want, I did still include it, because um, I'd also made one that was shaped like a Father Christmas. And I just thought, mm, it might be quite a nice way of getting those 30 Christmas cards that gets a bit of science in as well, because uh, I'm all for that. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that might be it. Have there been any qu the questions been pouring in? Can we please just have a look, a bit, a bit of a closer look at how you've made your pulley? Um, I don't know whether you can you move near the camera or the camera's in front of it. It just wasn't... Absolutely. Totally clear about how you right, so it. where do I need to be? Oh, here we are. Is that uh, yeah. right? If I just look at this, tell me if I go out of screen because if I look at the screen, I'll. So it's just a yogurt pot. I've made a hole here and here and I've pushed a skewer through. And on the skewer, I've got like a little bobbin for a sewing machine and it's held in place with a couple of bits of blue tack. And that is really, really quite secure in there and didn't take long to do at all. And then I've just left it proud a little bit so I can have these handles. So, because that does make a difference. It really helps you to, to, to get a feel for what you're doing. And then I pull that through. And then, do you think that's clearer now? Do you think yeah. that's? Yeah. Lovely. Oops. Yeah, brilliant. Lovely. Thank you very much. So, um, so overall, I mean, really the main message is it's, it's not what you do, but it's how you do it and what opportunities you give the children to ask their own questions. I think <clears throat> one of the most important things is those giving the children like stems, you know, how, what, where, what if, what if's a lovely one. Um, and when I'm working with children, I like to use the word I wonder a lot um, because it, it um, means I'm not asking the children, I'm a partner in, in discovering with them, so I wonder what will happen if, and that often sparks the children up, off uh, uh, to, to contribute if, and if I say what will happen if, because then it becomes like I'm testing them rather than sharing the learning with them. So any more questions?
like to know about the jacket potato. You'd like yes. to know about the jacket potato, because at the end of the first week, those of you that didn't see it, I did promise that I would share with you how a jacket potato nearly ended my career, which, which was a slight exaggeration, but it was one of those really horrible, cringy moments in my life that I'd like to um, edit out. But then I did get a lot of learning out of it. I've actually been coming to the National Science Learning Centre, even before I worked here. I used to come here and do courses, and I just, just love coming to do courses here, because I'd always come, come away really inspired with loads of ideas for things that I could do in school. But because I mainly work with the reception in year one, I used to have to go and do Key Stage 2 Science as well, because they used to have great ideas for Key Stage 2 Science. So it was agreed in our school, because I was the science subject leader, and, and everyone agreed I could do with the experience, that I was allowed to go into every class and work with the class teacher, um, to do something with their class. It was a wonderful experience and I learned so much until I went into the Year 5 class. And whereas all the other teachers had worked with me and we'd really had a good rapport and there'd been some sort of misunderstanding and she just sat at the back with some other work and was watching me. And it was horrible because I felt really, really out of my depth. But I started off with a great lesson. I've got um, an alien, a sort of, he's about this big, called Zarg. And I use him a lot in science, and he asks the science questions. Because he's come a long, long way, and he, he doesn't know about Earth, and he doesn't know about things on Earth. So he asks the children questions. And he asks them, how can I keep my baked potato warm? Because we don't have baked potatoes um, on the planet where I come from, and I think they're so delicious, and I want to be able to keep my baked potato warm. So it was a brilliant starting point, which really engaged the children. And also, I love the idea of using a baked potato potato instead of a hot drink to to test for for keeping things warm or anything with heat because um you can have a really really hot baked potato but you're not going to scold yourself because you're going to let go of it before, before it burns you and you can't spill a baked potato even jane can't bake spill a baked potato so um they're a lovely thing to, to work with so that was great so i've got zarg great tick um a baked potato great i knew what i wanted them to learn i wanted them to learn all about and thermal insulation. So I had written them a letter. Everyone was really, really excited and fired up. And then things started to go wrong because we started to have that discussion, the plan, what, what are we going to do? And the children came up with so many ideas, much more ideas than I was used to fielding in, in a reception class. And we think that, well, I think newspaper would be great because my, my grand says that when she used to get her fish and chips in, in, in wrapped up in newspaper they used to keep really hot and it was much better and someone said well when I go to the takeaway we get one of those little um, uh, polystyrene containers and my dad says that that's because it'll keep our dinner warm and then somebody else says well I've got a thermos flask and that's really good and I'm just like well I've just got some firm fabric and some tin foil and but I was pressing on I've got this lesson to do and I've got someone watching me and you know when you've got levels of um cortisone in your blood you can't think so straight which is why we don't do our best teaching when Ofsted inspectors are in the room um, so I was just pressing on and not making good decisions at all and we ploughed on and we 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 forgot about the newspaper and the polystyrene and um, all their wonderful ideas and we just tested the tin foil and the fur fabric and whatever I'd already planned and then I wanted them to do graphs so I wanted them to do the planning and make graphs and and then we did the testing and by the end of the lesson now this teacher was like one of the most precise tidy organized people you have ever met and her classroom was trashed and she was watching me trash her classroom and honestly I just at the end of the day the children left the graphs looked like nothing anything to do with what they should have done the classroom looked awful she looked unhappy and I was like I obviously hadn't got them to tidy up because we just run out of time and it just felt like I was the worst teacher in the world and I'd, and I'd forgotten a lot of lessons that I should have taken from an early year's classroom. What a lot! I couldn't do all that in one afternoon. Um, and it, it felt awful until the next day, um, George's mum came to find me. She went, George really enjoyed science yesterday. And that one little thing kept me going. But I did, I did make loads of mistakes. And I was focusing so much on the product instead of the process. Um, but actually, I learned more than the children that day. So... Thank you very much for listening.